okay? Um, all right, so thank you very much. We are going to do cinnamon rolls today. And I wanna make sure that you realize that we're gonna be doing them in stages. And um, so some things I might stop and say, this is where you're gonna start this, you're gonna keep doing this. It's just, I wanna make sure that you are going to um, get everything done in the hour, okay? All right, now we're gonna start first with doing the yeast. Now, there are several kinds of yeast. There's yeast in a packet, there's yeast in a jar, there's cake yeast, there's different kinds of yeast. I prefer the yeast in the packet because I can kind of keep it in the refrigerator. It stays um, like for a much longer period of time because there's times where I can go a very long time without baking and I like my yeast to be fresh. The cake yeast is really good, but um, it kind of has a shorter lifespan even in the refrigerator, okay? So I would like to go with the rapid packets that you can buy at almost any grocery store, except right now during the quarantine, it's kind of hard to find because it seems like everybody's there. And um, I have a new apron on today that says peace, love, soul, and bacon. And baking, as I say. So I'm going to make the world better today by doing some baking of cinnamon rolls. All right. So if you have a thermometer at home, it's very useful. I like to try to take the temperature of my um, water, which is coming out of the microwave in just a second. And I warm it up to about 110. And it can go up to even, let's say, 120. But you don't want it to go too much higher than that because it, it'll start to kill the yeast. The yeast will become alive. It's like in a, it's like a state of sleep right now. I got about 115, which is good because by the time I add my ingredients in here, it's going to bring the temperature down. Remember, water boils at 212, so that would be boiling, and you want to have warm water to activate the yeast. So I'm going to take my four teaspoons of yeast. And you may have your yeast ready already. And I'm going to just open that up. And the first thing we're going to actually put in there is the sugar. We're going to dissolve the sugar in there. You always want to sprinkle it in. Okay. Just going to stir. Dissolve it a little bit. And then you're going to take your yeast. And what you want to do is kind of create a raft above the water. You're sprinkling it in and covering the whole surface. Don't stir it. The point is, is to make a little raft. So we're gonna just sprinkle it, cover the area, try to keep it even. So it has even surface area covered of the water. Sprinkle it all in there. And we're gonna be looking for a foam, okay? And it will start to foam and activate. And then after the time is up, then we'll stir it. You don't stir it before, you let it do its job. I'm doing it in a clear um, measuring cup of glass because it helps insulate the heat. Um, I prefer you do it in a glass bowl instead of a, maybe a metal bowl, but either way, it's fine. It'll keep its heat, and it will also help you see what's going on when we're doing the filming. So we're going to set that timer. We're good. We're going to set that to the side, and we're going to continue on with getting our flour ready for making the cinnamon bun. Okay. Sometimes I keep a little bit of a paper towel underneath it or a wet rag to keep the bowl from sliding too much, okay? Some people do it on their, you know, countertop. Some people like to do it on a table. It gives them more space. This is an actual table. So it's a little bit lower than a countertop. So I have my five cups of flour. All pre-measured out. Remember to use your dry measuring, cup, measuring cups. Do not use the liquid ones because Baking is a science, and if you use the liquid ones, you're not gonna come out right. It has to be the dry measuring cup, okay? So, we are going to, first, instead of sifting, because there's so much flour, I like to just use a whisk, and I whisk my flour a little bit. Get it going here. And this is actually a, a European or Swedish whisk, which I love. It's like my favorite piece of equipment in my kitchen. And this poor thing has been through a lot. And they sell them at IKEA too, uh, but they're more they're plastic ones. This one I actually got in Sweden, and it's lovely because it gets right at the bottom of pots and stuff. All right, so I did that. I'm gonna pour in my sugar, which is a half a cup. Sprinkle it in. Yeah. Gonna do my kosher salt. Remember, use kosher salt, not iodized salt. The result is gonna come out much different. 
And you say, we're making cinnamon rolls. Why are we putting salt in the dough? Well, salt actually, besides flavor, it actually helps monitor the moisture. Um, and it also helps control the yeast production. It keeps it like in check because the yeast can get out of control and all of a sudden you'll have a bit of a huge cinnamon roll that just won't stop puffing. So this kind of keep, the salt is gonna keep the yeast from getting out of control as balance, okay? We saw that up good. And then we're gonna make a little well in the middle, which means like a hole inside this, okay? Like that. And then that, I'm gonna put my one tablespoon of vegetable oil. Pour that in there. My baby little spatula. Get it all out. And I'm just gonna leave that for right now, okay? Because we have to wait for the yeast to develop in the water. So I'm just gonna set that aside for just a little bit. And we're gonna talk about the pans. Now, the pans that you use need to have, and I'm gonna use these little foil ones I have here, because these are usually the ones that go in my small little baby oven. But today I'm gonna use a big oven because I wanna bake two of them off at one time. I can't get 12 cinnamon rolls in this thing here, okay? But I wanna show you that you wanna make sure you put parchment at the bottom. It's gonna help them from burning because with, with the schmear that we put in there has a lot of sugar and it's gonna caramelize, but sometimes if it gets the metal, it can burn, okay? If you don't have butter or oil, this is olive oil spray. I put one there just to keep it in place. And I spray around the sides. You don't necessarily need to spray the paper itself. It'll get a little bit on there. One in the middle. There. And then our sides. You want the deep sides because remember, it's going to rise a little bit and you don't want it to come over. Now, since these are so thin, I'm actually putting them on a like a cookie sheet so that my bottom doesn't burn. Because like I had mentioned, with the, with the schmear we put inside of it with the brown sugars and the white sugars, it will have a tendency to burn if it's too um, thin, okay? So just consider that with your pan, what uh, kind of if you need a double pan on that or not, all right? So, all right, so is everybody caught up? Everybody have their pans ready? And we wanna make sure that your yeast is going on good. And at this point, we have a question. One I have, question. I have a question. But it just occurred to me that I messed up on the yeast. I didn't put enough. Is that catastrophic? Um, it may not rise as much. It may just not, you know, did your, has your dough um, already increased by half its volume? It hasn't increased by half, but it definitely got a bit bigger, maybe 30, 40%, I don't know, 50%. Okay, 50% um, is good. So let it keep going. We're not there yet. So it may continue to rise. If you've, you know, done your dough ahead of time, that's okay. Uh, if your oven is on, but you don't have that kind of an oven, you have a wall oven. Um, the one thing you can do is maybe put, um, a wet rag in the microwave in like a bowl wet, wet with water. Heat the towel up really well. And then when it comes out of the microwave, put it underneath your bowl so that your bowl gets a lot warmer. Well, my and bowl's it, really warm, it's outside. <laughs> oh, well then you're, you're doing, well, that's, then you're doing good. All right, leave it, leave it as be. And make sure the top of it's covered uh, over something like a, a dish rag. Okay. You don't want it to dry out either. So, um, and then we'll check on it before we start rolling out in a minute. Cause I have a dough that I started earlier just so that I could keep going on while the process of the baking and everything else is going on. Okay, we're gonna mix our sugars right now because we're still waiting for the yeast. So we're gonna check in on our yeast right now. Let's see, look at that. See how it's puffing up, it's getting foamy. That's what we're looking for. But we're not ready to start yet, all right? So we're gonna leave it there. It keeps doing its thing. It's gonna start smelling kind of yeasty, like, like beer, you know? So, all right, so we're gonna mix our sugars together. Take another small bowl. We have our half a cup of brown sugar, half a cup of regular granulated sugar, and then we have one tablespoon of cinnamon, all right? So we're just doing some of these things a little bit out of order, just because I'm filling in some of the time, and I don't want anybody to fall too far behind and, I want to keep all the, all the ball rolling. So take our plastic off, and then this off. Okay, there we go. All right, put our sugar in there. Half 
a cup. Then we have our brown sugar. See the shape of that? It's because we used our dry measuring cup there. That first mixed in our fork. Move that around. Now you may not eat all of this, you may need all of this, but this is a good you know, judgment amount that you need. Some people like a lot, you know, some people don't, so it's up to you once we start putting it in the smear, okay? And we're gonna put in our cinnamon. Pour that in there. Does white brown versus dark brown sugar matter? Um, you know, um, Light brown sugar tends to have a little more moisture in it, and you don't want to have too much moisture. That's why I like to do the combination of, because then your, your um, moisture in the middle of your, of your cinnamon roll, you like it a little bit soft, but you don't want it to have too much moisture to where it's doughy. Have you ever had a cinnamon roll where you're like this, you want the cinnamon to be soft, but you don't want it to be raw? And I find that when you mix these two, it gives you a better combination to where your inside is soft, but not raw when you're cooking. It's not disastrous, but you may have to cook it a little bit longer. You gotta check one of them. So some people you know, prefer to use you know, all brown. That's not, if you use dark brown, remember the dark brown sugar has molasses in it and you're gonna have a lot more moisture if you're using all dark brown sugar. So I tend to stay away from dark brown sugar unless a recipe specifically needs that extra moisture. So definitely the light brown sugar uh, is what I prefer to use, but I do a combination to keep that balance, okay? So we have that mixed up real good. That's like, looks like it's one thing. We're gonna set that aside when we do the schmear. And I think that we're ready to go. How much foam do we have? We have lots of foam, okay? See, right over the top, bring that camera right over the top. Can you see that? Foamy. Now, well, this is what we're gonna stir. We're gonna take our spoon. We're gonna do a little bit of stir. Not too much, we don't wanna get too crazy. But you can see the foam. It almost looks like a cappuccino now, right? Frothy, see that froth? The cappuccino. And then we're ready to go. That's our timer. So we got the well, we got the oil. We're gonna pour this in to the middle of our well, which is our hole there. Let's scrape all that goodness out. Get all that yeast. Doesn't smell too good, but it's gonna taste good. All right, got that. Now, notice. When we do the mixing by hand, I don't know who has a, a KitchenAid mixer. I have one, but I just assume that not everybody has one. So we're gonna do it by hand. It's a lot of work. It's gonna take some muscle and patience, but you have to at least knead it for five minutes, possibly eight. I'm gonna get it started and my lovely assistants are gonna continue the kneading and I'm gonna bring a dough out that's already done in a minute, okay? So I'll show you the in-between stage and show you the finished stage of kneading and how we cover it. You spray the uh, bowl with oil and cover it up. But I'm not gonna do this. This is not what we're doing here. We're gonna take it, my one hand, try to keep one hand as clean as possible, holding the bowl, and you're gonna just start pushing this into the middle of the well, filling the hole up, okay? And as you do that, I'm just gonna start tossing. Keeping my hands like that closed and just tossing. What you're trying to do is make like a lot, a lot of layers of the flour into the dough. Just tossing it around and I'm twirling my bowl on top of the wet rag, okay? Now, it's gonna start getting sticky. Don't start squeezing your hand. Just keep your hand like you have it. Scraping the bowl and getting the flour to cover up all those like matzo balls or whatever we're gonna call them, okay? And just flipping it over. Flipping, no squeezing yet, okay? Save your strength for the kneading. Turn your bowl, flip it. You're gonna see it's kind of flaky, see that? So you're trying to develop some nice good dough. All right, and keep flipping it. Now, this same recipe you can use to make pretzels, and I have the recipe for that of what to do once your dough is proofed, and it makes the best, oh, the best pretzels. So if you guys are interested, I can send that recipe along to the library, and um, you can use the same dough. And so if you don't want that many cinnamon rolls, you can take half the recipe once it's proofed, and do half pretzels and half cinnamon rolls. And the pretzels should bake in, you know, bake in soda water and then bake them. All right, now it's kind of coming together. See how it's getting a little bit more shiny? 
a little bit more wet. Now I can start pressing, pressing in to grab all the extra flour. All right, and I have some here, chunks on my hand. I squeeze it down, put it in there, and start pressing. You want to use the palm of your hand in there. See that indention? Like that. Press. Now, with the KitchenAid mixer, it works. But what we're trying to do is develop a lot of gluten. This is all-purpose flour. So there's different flours. So when you make different things like cake, it has a lot of different ingredients in it that help the cake stay nice and light and airy. All-purpose flour is just general, but it does have a lot of gluten in it, okay? When people make pizza, they order a special flour that's more glutinous for pizza because they wanna make sure the dough is nice and soft after it's proofed. Now, if you say, what if I don't wanna go through all this and I wanna make these in the morning, what can I do? What you can do is you can knead your dough for five or ten, eight minutes, wrap it in plastic. Well, actually, I should spray the plastic with oil, then wrap it in plastic real tight and put it in the refrigerator. And then in the morning, if you wanted to make them, then you can take them out and bring the, the dough to room temperature and put it back in a bowl, like we said, with the oil and proof it for an hour to it doubles its size. Then, then you can proceed. This way you got half the work done the night before. All right, so we're kneading it. How many minutes have I kneaded it? Anybody? Oh, good. So it's coming together. I'm gonna scrape my bowl. Got a little bit here that hasn't worked in. Just press one more time to get it in there. And then at this point, I'm going to turn this over to one of my assistants because see, it's getting shiny, but I want it nice and shine, more shinier and smooth. So I'm gonna have somebody else keep kneading this. And then I'm gonna show you what it's gonna look like after it's set up in an hour. Let me scrape all this off my hand. Get that away. All right. You keep kneading and doing the work. And what I'm doing, you'll be able to kind of watch while you're doing that, okay? Now, take a look at my bowl. Almost exactly like the other one. I mess over here. It has, you can almost see the haze in there because it's created steam and it's like nice and tight, a bubble, because the yeast breathes, okay? And it's gas, which helps your doughs rise. So that's what this has done. It actually even feels warm to the touch. Okay, so my dough wasn't this big when I put it in there. It's much smaller. And I'll actually have him bring over the, the ball so you can see how much bigger this one has got. Okay, you can feel the heat come out of the bowl when you put your hand there. Yeah, okay. So this is what size it was before. And this is what size it is now. So it has doubled in size. And what you're gonna be looking for after it does sit for an hour, you see how this is kind of hard? See how my hand goes in there and it leaves like a dent, like a big dent. This one I have to actually press just barely. It's like, it's really soft, okay? This is hard, tough, okay? That kneading helps break down the protein in the flour and, you know, like a rubber band. A rubber band's tight when you first get a new rubber band, but the more you keep stretching that rubber band over and over and over again, you loosen it up enough to where it has ready to give like a little bit more give to it. And that's what the flour is going to do. So. This already has had oil sprayed in it. It had the plastic over. It sat for an hour, okay? So now I'm going to get my paper to the side. I'm gonna put a little flour down on my countertop or table. Not a lot, because we don't wanna dry out the dough, okay? <laughs> Just enough. Now, before I go any further, does anybody have any questions? Are you still kneading? Anybody kneading? How does this look? Let me see. Okay. That looks good. It's not bad, right? No, did you touch it? How does it feel, it's like soft? It feels soft. Okay, almost airy. Yeah. Okay, then you're good. Anybody else? Okay, I'm gonna continue. So we're gonna put a little flour on our table. There. We're gonna take our dough. It's gonna be a little sticky on the bottom. That's not a problem. Put it on the thing. Scrape all of it out of the bowl, left over. All right, now our goal is to make a rectangle. And uh, you want about a fourth inch thick. You don't want it too thick, okay? So make a little room here. Make a little flour in your hand, a little bit on the top. Just a little. 
And I'm gonna use my European rowing pin this time because it's extra long and extra big. My other little papalote, the one I used the other week, is very small and short. That's more like for my tortillas, okay? So I'm, it's nice and warm. I always coat my rolling pin with a little bit here so it doesn't get stuck right in the middle. And you're not here, you're here first. Go like this, slowly, make long strokes, okay? Depending on how big your counter is, if you need to turn it, don't be afraid to turn it. Because you're trying to shoot for a rectangle. Even all the way around. You don't want to have a big bulk like here and it needs to be nice and even so when you roll it into a log, it's uniform. You want to have uniformity when you're cooking, okay? Turn it around. Start making your own shape for the rectangle, okay? Oh, check that. I see a text it coming was, in. It was for me. Okay. There. Got a circle, so I'm going to start working on my sides here. Now I find I put one foot down and one behind me like I'm going to take off, it helps get the pressure when you're, when you're rolling. Oh, we've got nice toes. Turn it this way. We're getting there to a rectangle. Now, if you're having a time rolling out the dough, see how easy mine's rolling out? Then you may not have proofed long enough, okay? And you see it's not sticky. It's not sticking to my rolling pin. And if you have an American rolling pin, you know, with the ends like that, uh, sometimes it's easier to use in the middle like this. Because if you do this, it seems to me sometimes it makes too much of a, a dent in it. That's just me sometimes. So if you want to try in the middle of your big rolling pin like this, it might help even out the pressure with the American one. That's why I like these European, because see how the European has a little bit narrow here and then it widens in the middle. I'm turning mine one more time, and I'm almost ready. Okay. How's everybody's dough coming? Everybody rolling out pretty good? Okay. You can use your hand to stretch like that a little bit too if you want to try to get a good triangle. I mean, a rectangle. <laughs> Not a triangle, a rectangle for sure. Okay. All right. Mine is almost ready. I'm going to turn it one more time because you want the rectangle facing this way, more along this way. All right. Now, it doesn't need to be a perfect rectangle, but just pretty much like this. Does everybody look pretty good? Mine's a longer rectangle. Is that okay? Yeah, it's, it's, it's fine. So you're gonna, you know, make sure that it's pretty even. Like that. Mine needs a little bit more on the end there. Okay, because it's gonna get rolled. It's, you know, when we cut it, that's what's gonna make the, the look of the thing. All right, so now we have that. We're gonna work on our schmear next. Our schmear is our two tablespoons of butter or more, but I try to do less because if you put too much, it's just, it's real greasy. I have a little bit more in mind because I have another batch I'm going to make with the other dough that it's getting need right now. Let's take a look at that dough and see how shiny it looks so far. Oh, coming on over. This is the dough. See how it's getting more smooth as it's being kneaded some more, but it's still pretty a little tough. It doesn't feel like the other dough, so we're going to keep kneading that. All right, so I have my long rectangle or square, however it worked out for you, okay? Remember, we're gonna get 12 of these. Now take a look at my depth, my thickness here. All right, you don't want it thin like that, okay? You want it a little bit, have a little bit of, you know, depth to it, okay? And a fourth of an inch. Mine's a little thicker, is that all right? Uh, give it a little bit more roll because if it's too thick, your, your cinnamon roll is gonna be raw on the inside. So I'm gonna give mine, just when I was, I was talking as I was rolling, I'm gonna give mine another roll too. I want it too thick because then, it's going to be doughy, like super doughy in the inside. Okay. All right. Mine looks pretty good. Uh, I like to use an offset spatula, but if you have a silicone spatula, you can use that too. My butter softened, not melted. And you do a, a smear over here. Light, not heavy, <laughs> just a very small coating of it. If you want to use a silicone spatula, I'll show you the silicone. You can use a silicone spatula. Like that. It seems to go on a little bit easier for some people. So, you know, you can use different tools for this. 
back to my this one. Poke a hole like me there. Smear it. Now it's just like a coating. You don't you want to make sure that you know it's coated, but not like you know you're trying to frost a cake. Okay, that's not that's how, how much we want. This is just enough for to keep it moist the inside and also for the the, the um, cinnamon uh, sugar mix that we did to, to to stick obviously and give flavor. Okay, we got that. All right, and it's all it's going to melt anyways. It's going to end up at the bottom of the pan. You're going to be like, oh my gosh, that was a lot of butter. But that's what happens with cinnamon rolls. All right, I'm good. Yeah, nice coloring on there. And I used about two tablespoons. I have two left for my other, other batch. Okay. Now we're going to take the sugar, the mix. You're going to do it with your hand. You're going to sprinkle. Some people are still buttering. Hmm? Some people are still buttering. Okay, that's okay. Take your time. Keep buttering. It's going to show like that. All right. Let me know when you guys are ready to keep going. Are they still going? We're not as speedy at buttering as you. We need That's okay. Keep going. I have assistance over here. <laughs> I switched my utensil because I almost made a hole in the middle. I was like, oh, it's going fast. I must make a hole. All right. But it looks good. And for those of you who are, are actually able to do this, um, make sure your oven's at 400 degrees, middle rack. For those who are done kneading by now, you should be done kneading. You're gonna spray your bowl with oil in a minute and I'll show you. And then we're gonna cover it with plastic and I'll show you how to do that. So you just keep kneading. You can't over knead it, just put it that way. All right, everybody ready for the sugar? Okay, buttering. Just still buttering? Okay, <laughs> still buttering, all right. Any questions while I'm here? They're muted. Okay, I'm make sure that working. you're using unsalted butter. That's what I forgot to mention that, unsalted butter. Because then you're gonna yeah. have a little bit of a salty. Um, Too late. Too late. Oh well, you know. Mean salty. If you have any caramel chips, then throw some caramel chips in there because then it can be like a salted caramel cinnamon roll. I already have chocolate chips ready. Oh, okay, well, that'll that'll counter it. I'm pretty sure they're not gonna go to uh -huh. the cinnamon rolls. Not gonna go to waste. All right. Now we're gonna sprinkle. Are we good to sprinkle? Sure. All right. Gonna sprinkle. Try to keep it even. Leave a little bit on the edge there so then we roll it, it has somewhere to stick onto the other dough, okay? And again, it may not need all of this, but this is a good you know, amount. And if you have any of this left over, keep it in an airtight container. You can use it next week to sprinkle on your French toast. So we're making French toast next week. All right. So this is what I have here. And then I lightly use my fingertips, these two fingertips, just to spread evenly so that when you roll it, you don't have like a big, you know, like bump on one of it. Nice cinnamon roll. A little bit more. I can help tell you when you need a little bit more. That looks good. All right. If you are putting in raisins, chocolate chips, pecans, pecans, this is where you do it. Don't put it on the edges. You want to keep it, you know, here, not here, here towards your body. It's going to roll. You want to sprinkle a little bit here on your side here on it, but just try to keep them away from the edge, okay? I had a little bit left because I think that's enough for me. All right. <clears throat> Are we ready to roll? Anybody? Still doing the, you're a bit fast. Okay, that's right. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. While you're doing that, I'm going to bring in the bowl and just to take a look at it. So you keep going. I just want to take a look at the kneading process, what has happened. And we are good. And I'm going to show you in just a minute when we're finished rolling this, what the, what it should look like and how we spray and cover it back up. Okay. All right. Like that. All right. Good. Good. All right. Good cinnamon roll takes time. All right. So we're going to work on this edge right here. I'm bring the camera in just a little bit. You see the edge here? Well, a little bit. 
we are going to make a little lip kind of like here to get started. This is the best part of the cinnamon roll, right? Everybody likes the center. This is going to be like your center. So when we roll it, you're going to take it, but you're going to pull it back every time like that. Okay. Once you get it going, use your hand to keep it even. Cross. Once you start getting it to that part where you have about an inch rolled, you're going to get, it's going to be a lot easier to roll. And you pull it back every time so it stays tight. Okay. And I pull it out this way too. See? That, pull it out that way. Smooth, you don't wanna have like a big bulge here, like it's got, you know, a growth. Roll it, keep pulling it like that. That's nice and even, like that, that's important, because when it bakes off, you wanna make sure that it's baking off evenly. This one could have been a little bit more rectangle, but we're going to go with it. When we cut it, okay. So I have this long log right here, okay? Extends from here to here. You should be able to get 12 cinnamon rolls out of this. And you say, how do I make them as even as possible? Ah, I'm glad you asked. You figure. You're going to get six on each half. So if you put a little line here, right down the middle, that gives you six on this side and six on this side. So if you need six here, you divide it in half again. Then you're going to get three pieces out of here, three pieces out of here, three pieces out of here, and three pieces out of here. So that's how you do it. So you're going to start off going, all right? I got to get three pieces out of here. One, two, three. One, two, three. Go over that a little bit. One, two, three. I'm gonna go over this one here. I think that's 12. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, one 10, more. 11. It's gonna be a baby one. And it can't all be even, but they're pretty good, all right? Before you do that, you make sure you eyeball it and look and say, am I happy with that before I slice through it? Understand? Now, you can either use a serrated knife or something like this. It has a sharp edge like this. So I'll show you which one with both. So I'm going to take this. You can start in the middle if you want to. Or if you see you start in one end and it starts getting too small, you can always adjust. So this is with the serrated knife. Like that. That. I'm going to put the nice pretty side to the top. You're going to place it in your pan over here. Put a tail next to Tuck your tail in like that and put it next to a side, pretty close to it, okay? Now, if you wanna cut it with something like this they use in the pastry shop, just go straight down, they bring it with them. Like that, take your tail, tuck a little bit, put it right next to the side. Leave a little bit of space, but put your tail next to the wall, okay? Same thing over here. I'm gonna go a little smaller because I wasn't happy with that end over there, okay? So I got one there, I cut there. Same thing, I find the tail, put it next to here. That one's a little short, so let's see. Tail there, tucking it there. It seems like it's too loose. You can always, again, tuck it in there. See it there. I put that one there so it took, so I got push that one down. I got six in there. Your pan might be a different size, so it's okay. So now I got this there, six, seven. Okay. You can always do them like this too. If you're not sure what size you want to make sure you have. All right. This tail looks like it's a little loose. I'm gonna tuck it in there. All right, so hopefully you guys are tucking everything in really good. 
This last one looks a little misshapen. I'm gonna take his tail and tuck it in and kind of give it a little push down. All right. Now, I've also made them like this where you can put three on the outer forest on the outside and put one on the inside. As long as your tail is tucked, you wanna make sure like that. So do that or leave them six like this, however you want to. But you can't put too many, you know, you gotta leave a little space because they're gonna expand a little bit, okay? So I'm gonna put mine almost like this off centered so they can expand a little bit, all right? So that's what that yeast needs, it needs room to grow. All right, now we have them ready to go. They're gonna go in the oven. And I have, again, I have it on this other pan so that it shields the bottom of that. All right, we have that taken care of. They're gonna go in the oven for, we're gonna say 20 minutes. Meanwhile, we're gonna make the, well, we're gonna make the frosting. We made the schmear already. We made the frosting. Um, some people call it icing. Uh, it's a cream cheese one, okay? Oh, I almost forgot. I want to show you this. This is the after the kneading has been done. Okay, nice and smooth. It's softer than it was in the beginning. It's a little bit more shinier. You can see. What we're gonna do is we're gonna spray it with the oil. Let me get the oil. And I'm gonna spray the bowl. And it can stay dirty. This doesn't make any difference. Okay. Spray it there because what it happens is the spray helps it from sticking. But also as it's rising, it, it helps it because it starts to stick, it, it keeps it from rising. Since it's slippery, it lets the yeast grow a little bit. And we're gonna put some plastic wrap on top of it. Help create a little steam. There. And while I usually have my oven preheated, I keep this on top of there. And that's how I did the other one. I also like to put a like a dish cloth on top of it. So it also helps keep the steam and the moisture in there and the light, because you don't want the top of your dough to be dry and crusty, okay? So there we go. And we're gonna go let it rest and proof for about an hour. And usually it's good. You can tell. Again, you want it to double in size. There you go. Take that away. It's good. We have our baking right here, so it's ready to come out. Next. We're going to uh, work on the icing or the frosting. Let me clean this up for a minute. All right. For those of you who actually put uh, yours in the oven, again, 20 minutes, put your timer on. I'll give you a second to kind of regroup if you're going to make the icing. Um, do I have anybody who wants to make the icing and the frosting? Any questions right now so far? Okay, everybody's catching up? Okay, so I'm just gonna get my little equipment set up here for just a minute. I need to get my mixer. I am gonna make the icing, because I love that on my cinnamon rolls. I'm gonna get my bowl. A nice deep bowl is good, because when you're mixing, you wanna make sure the icing doesn't splatter out. I don't want my bowl to take off. Um, I do this when I'm not using my KitchenAid. And it's sometimes hard with the KitchenAid filming, so we found that at least I can take the, the hand mixer in and out. I like to put a little bit of moisture on my paper towel or my kitchen rag. Sliding around. That's good. I got a hand mixer. And let's see my ingredients. Now, the ingredients I'm telling you to use for one batch is like four ounces of cream cheese. My, I'm doing two times the recipe because as you know, I have two doughs now. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to make the frosting all at one time and not have to make frosting or icing twice. So I have the one cup of powdered confection sugar and then the um, four ounces of the cream cheese. I have softened butter. This is as soft as you want it. See, I'm barely squeezing it. That's how soft you want it, okay? And again, I have two times the amount. All right, so let's see what I'm gonna put in first. Let me take these out so I can get these ready. There, so it's so soft. Okay, so my first ingredient, my first ingredient 
is going to be the cream cheese. We're going to soften up the cream cheese. All right, and we're also going to check um, the cinnamon rolls. And we're going to see, we got the kneading dinner. So I want to make sure we have everything that we're doing this in so many segments. All right, good. So first we're going to do the cream cheese. Gonna go in there. There we go. And we're gonna take our hand mixer. Okay. Very softened as well. So at this time of year, it doesn't take much for it to get soft. So come right in here and take a look. See how soft it is. Okay. All right, gonna soften it up. And I'm You don't have to turn the bowl. You don't have to turn the bowl. Nice and soft and creamy. Some people buy the whip already, but hard dough is limited with All right, you see those ribbons in there? That's what I'm looking for. That's what they call ribbons. Well, I want to see those ribbons in there. Okay, next with the cutter. Uh, maybe special. Put one in at a time. The size is really good. Incorporate that. second one. Now some people like to add flavoring to their icing. I think uh, Cassie and I were talking about that earlier with the Bailey Irish cream, some people vanilla. Uh, one time I put a little bit of, I had a little extra dulce de leche left, I added to that to get flavoring. You want to do that at the, you know, at toward the end, okay? You want to make it too liquidy. in it. We want to make sure that the butter is very well whipped. So we want to go a little bit longer, but I just wanted to stop and show you. Okay, this got got ribbons, but we still want to whip it some more, okay? You ready to still with me? All right, here we go. Adding in our powdered sugar. Gonna put in a little bit. Put in about half the amount. Mine's gonna look like more than yours because again, I'm making a double recipe for my two batches I got going. Let's put that in there. You're working with a kitchen. 
KitchenAid, you can stop and scrape down with your uh, silicone spatula. Get all the bottom out. With the hand mixer, you kind of get that. I'm just showing you. You scrape out in there. We're going to put the other part in there. I'm making so much, I'm going to do it in thirds. Now, you see why having a deep, a deep bowl is very important. You want this to go flying out the powder. Powder sugar. Okay. Not sticking it up. You don't want it to be too loose because it's going to melt a little bit when it's on the hot cinnamon bun, okay? That's good. We'll put our third back, the last part in there. Okay. Okay. Okay, now scraping. Hey, boy, good. Thank you. That looks good. Scrape that bottom. Nice and thick and creamy. A little bit more. And then we're going to taste it. Because some people might have different flavor profiles. Now I'm going to taste mine. Let's see here. Mm. That's good, but I like mine with a little bit more vanilla flavor. So I'm going to add a little bit of Dominican vanilla, which I like. Just a splash. And I actually like to add a touch of coconut flavor. That's just me. That's like a little secret I have. A couple of drops. Good. You have almond extract, you can add a couple of, but not too much liquid, okay? Because you're gonna, the emulsion's gonna get all out of balance. Now, in order to get as much frosting off as possible, you wanna lift it up while it's on, but not all the way up and kind of cover it with your hand, okay? All right, that's the beauty of having a, a deep. Let's see, I'm gonna take another taste. Clean spoon. Perfect. I must have like a little coffee flavor too. All right, so that's my frosting. Now we have a little bit more time to cure. I'm gonna set that to the side. It's gonna get it ready for when it comes out of the oven on my baking rack here. Now, uh, in case you ever get into a pinch, I'm gonna show you really quick how to make a glaze, a little bit of a glaze. If you have, let's say pancakes or, okay? And you have a little powdered sugar and you need a little water and create a little bit of a glaze, okay? You can just take a little pancake syrup. Powdered sugar. If you get in a pinch. And you need a little bit of a glaze and you don't have all these ingredients like cream cheese and stuff. It can make a little bit of a glaze for your... Yeah, and if you haven't even maple like extract, which I usually like to, I put a little maple extract in there too. Uh, let me see. Touch of water. In a second, I'm gonna get all this mixed in first, and then we're gonna put a couple drops of water to make a good emulsion. All right, just a couple of drops of water. Wow, good. I don't think I need more. Then you can drizzle it better. See how it's like pourable? It's good. Take a taste of that. Pop it on here. Mm, 
smells pretty good. I'm gonna put a touch of vanilla in here. I don't think I have any maple, so I'm gonna put vanilla. So another little drop of vanilla. And I'm gonna keep mixing. Keep mixing. All right, that gives a nice place. Again, you can just increase your amount. And this is a, a taste thing, okay? Some people don't like cream cheese frosting or anything too, you know, like heavy. And this just gives it a little bit of glaze on top that you can make with something that you have at home, maple syrup, things like that. And you make a glaze like that. So let me have a little container to pour this in. Let's see. A little container to pour this in. There we go. Just gotta put in the class. I'm gonna put in a plastic container so I can store this in the fridge. And you can use silver pancakes and stuff too as well. Turn that way, you can see a little better. And it will stay in the refrigerator. It's just like syrup would, okay? All right, all right. It's good. Put that away. We have about three to four more minutes on our on our um, cinnamon rolls. So we want to make sure a couple of things we know. One, the insides are going to be soft, but we don't want them to be raw. So when I take one out, I'm going to have a plate. I'm going to take transfer one. It, when I really know it's ready, I'm like, just you, you want to know in your heart, like, is it a good time to check? You don't want to just keep checking them and checking them. So when I think it's pretty much ready, I'm going to take one out. And one's gonna have to take a you know, take one for the team. Slice it in half and see what the inside. If the inside is to your liking, like it's cooked, it's gooey enough for you, it's not raw, great. But if it's raw, you know, you want to put it back in because you don't want anybody eating the raw dough. Okay. So one usually I you know, I know it's gonna have to like take one for the team, and you're gonna have like less than a dozen. All right. So chip, pick and choose. You can always put it back in the oven. That one with a half. You have to know if the insides are just right because if I've had one where the cinnamon roll was great and then I got to the inside, which is my favorite part, as I said, and then it's raw. And I'm like, ah, I can't eat the middle part. Like, that's the best, you know? So I want to make sure the rest of them, but especially if you're giving them away or something, you want to make sure that you don't give away a, you know, a raw cinnamon bun because they're going to, their hearts can be broken. Okay. All right. Any questions? None so far. Okay. We're going to take a look and see on um, how our dough is roofing. Uh, one question. Uh, thanks for the extra tip you, tips you gave us. Oh, good. All right. Who was that? Uh, Idris. Okay. Idris. Idris. Oh, yay. Okay. So see my dough. It's starting to. I can feel the pressure. The plastic is pushed up. It's got gas in there, and it's starting to double in size. It's not there yet, but it will be. So I'm going to be doing another round of this later on, uh, and make the rest of these because you can't. Once the dough is proofed, uh, you don't want to go past its part. Like maybe you know after an hour like maybe an hour and 30 but then it starts to lose its gas and it'll deflate and then you're not going to have a perfect baked item it's going to just go south fast okay so you want to make sure if you're not going to use the dough right away that you need it wrap it put it in the fridge and then start the proofing process when you are going to bake it okay so i'm going to cover this back up and put that back over there on the stove and let me see what else we have here. We're almost there. I'm gonna get a plate ready because I'm going to be able to slice. I have my serrated knife. Slice through that. And we're gonna be ready to transfer one here to do the testing. I have my baking rack here. So we'll do the transfer over. Uh, raisins, someone asked about raisins. Yes, you can put raisins in there. I love raisins, currants, raisins. Some people like cranberries. That's their, you know, that's what they like. Uh, Chocolate chips, um, butterscotch chips, they sell those usually around Christmas time. Um, I've done, I added dulce de leche. I have this liquid that I buy from Goya. It's like a dulce de leche that we put on French toast and stuff. I've put that in there, I put that on top of there. So you can, you know, experiment, you know, with your, you know, play, flavors that you like to do. Um, uh, you just asked about nuts. Nuts, yes. Jen is doing hers today and she did half of her loaf with uh, pecans and the other half, I think maybe with chocolate chips or something for the kids. So depending on, you, know, you don't have to make two separate batches. You could just, when you're gonna do the log, you can just put them in part of it. Yes, one more question. Is there an internal temperature that can help you tell the doneness? Um, 
I'm not sure I've ever done that way. A lot of times baking, it's like looking and touching and see if it's set. But I'm going to get my thermometer right now, and I'll take a temperature of mine, and that'll give you a guess before you cut yours. So let me get my thermometer. Here's the one that just came out. That's the timer. It's set. You see how it's set? I'm not even feeling stuff in my fingers, so I can touch it. But it's hot. It's set. My tail didn't separate, so it did good. So I got my thermometer over here. And I will take a temperature just so maybe like you might know. And then we're going to still cut it anyways. So that's going in the center, not all the way through. You want to go halfway through. I have a temperature. It's still rising. Let's see. It's a good experiment. I've never taken the temperature of the inside of the cinnamon roll. 155. I'm assuming we're going to hit over like 165, I bet. I think instant read thermometer is an oxymoron. No, yes, it is. So yeah, if we go 165, it's first of all, it's safe to eat. So now let's just cut it and see where we're at. So we know, cut that, macerated nice, and see, it's hot. Now, do you see the pores in my bread? Can you see that? Now my, my bread is, cooked there, it's cooked there, the inside's soft, but it's not like raw. Even It could have gone even like another minute or two, but it's still, you know, just in case. And see, so here's my center here. It's not raw and gooey. So if I'm pulling it, it's not gooey, it's bread. I don't know if you can see that. I'm gonna put it a little piece close to it. It's hot, but I'm gonna try to hold it there. So that looks like bread, okay? And I just tasted it, and it's bread. So we're good. So that 165 is a good gauge. And it's also, you know, you want to make sure it's safe to eat, which is good. But my outside's crisp and the inside wasn't raw. I wish I could smell it. I need to smell it. Oh, I need to smell it. Yes, it does. The house smells like a bakery in here. Okay, so now we have over here, we're going to transfer the camera over here. We have our buns. Now, you see on this one, I put like three, uh, one, two, three, five on the outside, one on the inside. That worked really good. This one worked out good. I'm missing one because I just, I just moved it to do the cutting. So... If that's why that's one missing. But see how they help keep each other crowded together? You don't want to be too loose because then they just kind of get misshaped. And this one almost lost its tail, but that was that end I didn't like how it came out anyways. So now we're gonna put our schmear. Let me get there. Actually, I'm gonna put our frosting, not our schmear. All right, so now we have our frosting. Now I like to put mine when it's hot. It's up to you. Everybody good in this house? Okay, I'm gonna go with these here. Put this, I'm gonna put this frosting on there. It's gonna melt a little bit, but that's okay. Now, if you can see in the bottom of the pan, there's some liquid that came out of the, um, out of the cinnamon rolls. That's good. Sometimes it's gonna be, if you see a whole bunch of butter swimming at the bottom, you might wanna go a little more lighter on your smearing next time, okay? Unless you like it like that, you know? Now, depending on how much, I just put a little bit to start off with, and once I cool, if anybody in my house wants to put more, they can have at it. Okay. Shout out to some of my neighbors. I think they're going to be ready for cinnamon rolls. I have some promised. All right. That. Good. That's yummy. And if you don't want the, you know, if you don't want this, you can just top them off with powdered sugar too or syrup, or anything that you might have at your home. Right now, I know if it doesn't have everything. And I'm gonna do this last one here. And I hope everybody's came out as nice as these. And I didn't have lunch, because I'm gonna be having one of these for lunch, apparently. Do my calories in. All right. That's so good. And again, after it cools a little bit, you can put a little bit more in there. But that goes into the little creases and the swirls to help out. So mine wound up being a little bit wider because of the pecans, so yes. the temperature was lower. So I, they should probably go in. How much longer should I go for? Should I do two? Uh, two I'd say about three or four more minutes. Just take a look, because once it's got the internal heat, it's going to cook, keep cooking fast. Okay. So did you cut one open? Was it a little raw? I didn't cut it open because the temperature was below 150. Oh, then go back in for like about oh, three or four more minutes and check it. Yeah, for sure. I'm pretty sure somebody there doesn't want to sacrifice one, right? Remy's, the problem? Remy's were a higher temperature because hers were not as wide. Okay. 
That's good. And so, you know, depending on how they come out. And then once you do it one time, you'll know. You'll know. I'm going to show you the inside picture again. Can you see that? I'm going to put it on its side here. So it's not gooey, you know, like to the touch in there. It's soft, but not like where you can just make it like, it, it's not like a strand that you can move right. like, a, like dough, okay? Right. It looks like bread, all right? So again, the inside of mine doesn't have a whole bunch of, you know, sugar and stuff because we don't like ours too. But if you make it next time and you want to use all the sugar, go right ahead. But that just makes it, depends on how sugary you want it. I kind of keep ours a little bit in the light. We're more frosting people, okay? So again, you can see, but the bottom's not burnt. It's just caramelized, okay? So you can see that. All right, any more questions? I hope everybody learned something. I hope I gave some good tips. Um, I hope you enjoy your cinnamon roll with a nice tea or coffee today or in the morning. If you wanna rewarm these up, you can put them in the toaster oven. Actually, they actually almost come out better if you have a microwave to put them in the microwave for like 10 to 15 seconds. Someone asked if they could use a toothpick test. The toothpick test might work, but it might not because I found that depending on where you put it at, but try it. If it comes out sticky, but like sticky as in there's dough stick to it, that's a no. But if it comes out and you see cinnamon powder or um, a smear, it's kind of deceiving. But if you come, if you put the cinnamon, I mean the toothpick in there and it actually comes out and it's like wet dough and it's it's uh, stringy, like, you know, you can pull it like that, then that's a no. Can you flip it during baking? Hmm? Can you flip during baking? No. Flip the cinnamon buns? Yeah. No. No, no, no. Because the bottom has all the sugar in it. It's, it's caramelizing. So it's a no. So that's a good question, but that's a no. Um, trying to think of anything else. But the 20 to 25 minutes is pretty much the gauge of time in there, okay? If you are putting pecans in there or any kind of nuts, please remember when you're assembling, not to put any on the top right away because what happens is, is your temperature's at 400, nuts can burn over a period of 10 minutes if you ever roasted nuts in the oven. If you're gonna wanna put them in the oven on the top, then you can put them on like the last five minutes. You can put them on the inside, but not on the top, last five minutes, because I don't want your nuts to burn, okay? When are you doing another recipe? My next week recipe, is going to be, um, well, it's more like technique. We're gonna do French toast. When? When? Next Wednesday at three o'clock, we're gonna be here. We're gonna do French toast and berry compote. Is anybody interested in getting this recipe and the ending of it show how to make it into pretzels? I can send yes. it to, yes? Because it's so it's so interesting to see how the same dough, you, you um, are able yes. to boil it in the baking soda and bake it off and they make such good pretzels. Um, I'll give the recipe to Kathleen and have her send it to everybody that tuned in today, okay? All right, any more questions? Can you do cookies sometime? You make Cook the best cookies. Yes, and that's another thing. If anybody has feedback, please either email the library and let them know if you're enjoying the program so we know if we can continue it or not. Also, if you have any suggestions, that's great. Um, we have two more classes for this month. This month is, like I said, is the French toast and the berry combo. The last one is macaroni and cheese, but that's a good idea for next month if the library decides to continue to host this. So um, send in your information and let us know. And other than that, I miss everybody. Take care and we'll see you next week. Any more questions? They say they like to learn some.